Villanova has used the same starting lineup in all 33 games this year, including today. Talk about continuity. Meanwhile, for Creighton, they have gotten big production across the board this season from three main players. But how about the play of Rachel Saunders as a senior, playing with a sense of urgency, according to Jim Flannery. Our officials, Rod Creech, Eric Bruton, Kenny Lukinich. And here we go, the second semifinal. Villanova controls the tip. Here is Matty Burke, the transfer from Penn State. Inside to Matty Segrist, back-to-back -back player of the year in the Big East. And a three from Mullen. Gets the scoring started for Villanova. Matt, Brooke Mullen only shoots 22% from three on the season. What a start for the Wildcats. How about the throwback jerseys, too? I dig Those it. Those are pretty. Semi-final Sunday. Eight to shoot. Mungins in a three. Yes! Beating the buzzer. We know this is a team that can get it going from deep. Leading the Big East with about nine makes per game, but they had 13 in the overtime win over Seton Hall last night. 40 of Creighton's 66 field goal attempts in their win against Seton Hall last night were from distance as Segrist is on the board off the window. Nice little give and go action. Maddie Segrist, Maddie Burke back to Maddie Segrist who moves so well without the ball. All time leading scorer in the Big East, male or female. Just a terrific season. Saunders. Molly the kick out. Mogensen again. Back to back threes. Silky from Segrist. Have we got a whistle yet? We have not. <laughs> Rapid pace, Mogensen, why not? All eight. We were wondering how they would respond today. Their game went to overtime. They didn't finish until 11.45. Segrist on the baseline lays it in. Jensen. Now Morgan Molly in the paint with the left hand left it short. Still whistle free. We're, we're in pickup mode right now. And there you go. Well, now we can identify our head coaches. Jim Flannery earlier this year picked up career win number 400. Just an absolute legend at Creighton. And uh, looking forward to this matchup with Villanova today. Feels like his team matches up well if they can shoot the three. And that's something that Denise Dillon, the head coach for Villanova, said they must do today. Chase Creighton off the three-point line. Yeah, Denise Dillon, so impressive. Just her third year coaching at her alma mater where she was a tremendous player. She played for the previous coach, Harry Peretta, and what she's done in such a short amount of time. Pretty incredible. A Villanova legend in her own right. Big Five Hall of Famer, Nova Hall of Famer as a player. Ronsick. Nifty move, fading away and flipping it up with the right hand. Emma Ronsick maybe could describe her as a positionless basketball player. She's technically their biggest player, their center, but she's gotten really comfortable from the perimeter, whether shooting the threes or attacking like she did just there. Hit the three late in the game to force overtime last night for Creighton. Runner goes for Segra. She's making everything. And tapped out of bounds, last touch by Creighton. We will take our first break. Neither of these two women have missed a shot. And that would be the first miss for Maddie Segrist. But 
one of the things she does best, follow up her own miss. She's already in, in double digits. She's averaging close to a double-double this year. Nine rebounds per game, along with 29 and a half points in league play. As Mallory Brake lays it in. Really tough shot by Olsen, forced by Lockett. Good defense by the freshman from Minneapolis. And Mogensen bumped a line change for Jim Flannery. Four new players enter into the ballgame. Part of her frustration there, too, might be she only played 13 minutes last night because she got into foul trouble early. And the win over to Paul. Molly following her miss. And wisely pulls it back out. 15 on the timer. Jensen trying to bake free. So too does Creighton. Segrist doubled. Another thing that Maddie Segrist does so well is get to the free throw line. Let's see if Jim Flannery had a case here. Dude, to me, that looked pretty straight up. I didn't see much. Sometimes you're straight up at top, but lower body contact. I didn't see much there from Morgan Molly. A rare miss from Segrist. 84% free throw shooter. DePaul missed four free throws in a row. Lucy Olsen hit the one that mattered most late in the game to break the tie and send Villanova into the semifinal. Shot clock turned off to end the first period. Seconds. Runyon doesn't get it off in time. The final spot in the championship game on the line tonight. The winner gets UConn. We're setting up for a good one from Mohegan Sun. I still think that seed could maybe be a little bit higher. If this is a team that is incredibly hot has won 10 of their last 11 the only loss a two-point loss at UConn let's, let's put some respect on the Jays Saunders draws a foul but you talk to coaches nobody really pays attention to the AP poll except for people like me and you people want but I think that's such an important point right now Matt for the players for the coaches there's there's so much noise to block out of talking to some of the players they see what people are saying on these projections i think at times it's it's best to just focus on who's in the locker room with you and not get on social media too much this time of year and focus on the game at hand which is the semi-final st john's is in according to autumn johnson as an 11 seed that would give the big east five teams and what a year it's been in this league and this tournament is showing how competitive it is yeah i think st john's got into the conversation with that Huge win up at UConn at the XL Center a couple weeks ago. They did lose to Marquette yesterday in the semifinal, so interested to see how the committee ends up ruling. Thing is, Marquette too projected to be an 11 seed. So losing to an eventual NCAA tournament team, how much does that really hurt you? As Jensen rattles in a fadeaway. Largest lead of the game for Creighton at five. Villanova's missed its last five field goals, leading to a 10-1 Creighton run. They go to their leading scorer, counted in the foul. Chance at a three-piece for Segrist. How about some emotion from Maddie? I'd love to see that. She's usually pretty even keel. Never, never too high, never too emotional. But I like this emotion in March. You can see it here. She's going to call for the N1. Yep. 
We'd love to see that in March. <laughs> on the drive in double figures with 10. Yeah, Molly Mogensen realizing that that side of the floor was cleared out for her. Everybody was pulled up towards the top of the key. There was no help that was going to come. She's able to blow by Lucy Olsen. Not easy to do. Having a terrific end to this season on double figures in three of the last four. Tap out to Olsen. Second chance here for the Cats. Jay, nothing but the bottom. Scottner, quite a good amount of points. And a push. She said, we're running out of painted balls mm -hmm. to give Maddie Segrist for all the accolades and the records that she's racked up this year. Yeah, hard to decide what to put on the graphic. She had a 50-point game this year. The Big East Conference all-time leading scorer. Villanova's all-time leading scorer. Triple from Lauren Jensen, though. For the first time for Nova. Segrist, 7 of 9. The rest of the team, 1 for 10. And it's interesting, as Megan reported, talking to Jim Flannery, he says, we know Maddie Segrist is going to get hers. Well, she's been tremendous, but they still have the lead, Creighton. And they've just advanced it to their largest lead of the game as Ronsick. Not letting her get, like, what two leading scores are get, 40 <laughs> points. She's put up 50 at one point this year. Highest in D1, men or women, as Dalsy rolls it in. And there's some support for Maddie Segrist, Christina Dalsy, a young star in the making, just starting to scratch the surface on what she can do offensively. And Jones picks the pocket of Bachelor. Segrist drawing contact. Really trying to bait you into fouling, or you have to stay disciplined and vertical. The quote unquote role players around Maddie Segrist. In the win, the Cats have multiple players in double figures. In the loss, only Maddie Segrist mm. scored 10 points or more. Really interesting. Great stat, Matt. Great nugget. I can't take credit. Many people have worked to pr produce some incredible stat packets leading into this tournament. How about Emma Ronsick from downtown? And Creighton now four of seven from distance. Offensively trying to get more pieces involved with movement, with cuts, with screens. Right now just six points from Wildcats other than Maddie Seegers. And then she's right about the defense. So far in this game, Creighton shooting 63% scorching. Too easy on that end. Jump ball. The rest of the team has hit just two field goal attempts. Seegers is up to 20. And they're a team that just plays with so much motion, so much spacing. You really have to commit to communicating on this end of the floor. When you play Creighton, uh, they're keeping it rolling here. Five to shoot. Olsen, step back. And Jones, the offensive board, had it stolen away. Molly was there. And Denise wanted motion. That was a possession where it was really just stagnant. One player trying to make something happen, four others standing around. made eight shots in a row. And Emma Rossick is a certified bucket. She's taking advantage of different matchups. That time she had a smaller Lucy Olsen on her. Took her out and shot over the top. Rossick and double figures with 11 on five of six. Eight point lead. Jones a three and much needed. Ronsick with five, oh. offensive foul. Citra Spears, it's been a really quick first half. <laughs> I, I can't believe you were promoting the halftime show. We, it feels like the end of the first quarter. I haven't had a ton of whistles. Went the first five minutes of the game without a whistle.
A three from Mullen. Yes! And as I said earlier, Brooke Mullen just a 22% three-point shooter. She's knocked down two in the first half. Ronsick rolling. Offensive foul. Stepped up the defense a little bit. The second consecutive drawn charge on Emma Ronsick. She'll have to go to the bench with three fouls. Denise Dillon talked about what she's meant to this program. Doesn't necessarily show up in the stat sheet, but makes all the gritty plays. Time to Segrist. And the shot clock turned off for Saunders. And Jim Flannery puts up the number one sign. They want the final shot. Five to go. Jensen with three. And Villanova ends the first half on a 6-0 scoring run. That's great stuff, Megan. Maddie Segrist was 8 for 11 in the first half. The rest of the team's 4 of 17, as you see it there on the graphic on the lower left-hand side of your screen. Going over this year, 2 and 4 when trailing at the half. Jensen gets it started with a 3. Very smooth. Very smooth. Lauren Jensen, perfect release points. Rotation on the ball, high follow-through. Responds. Jensen again with five. And the rebound snatched by Dalsu. Fans wanted to carry. Officials not having it. Segrist to Dalsu. She has scored 11 or more in four straight games, including the quarterfinal last night. Had 12 points and six rebounds. Loganson zips it down. Ronsick had it deflected by Olsen. And a shot clock violation. Good defensive effort. And Jim Flannery's calling for a foul. We're seeing more defense now. And only one Villanova turnover in the first half. Seven for Creighton. Segrist doubled. Says no problem. Flips it up and in. And she's still calling for that N1 down the floor. Already two threes in the game. Saunders walled off. Jensen off the bounce, draws a foul. That's the follow to go. The efficiency has been there. Incredible level of efficiency tonight. Nine of 12 so far. Two free throws by Jensen ended a three minute and 45 second scoring drop. Mismatch. Segrist takes advantage. What an elite level score we are watching. Second longest streak of 20 point games in NCAA women's basketball history. How about that finish? Ron six spinning, falling, counting. She almost lost her pivot foot. Burke. Three ball. Burke was an X factor in their win at 15 points. Here she is again with a basketball. We got to get that into Dalsy there. Had the number showing. Oh, tried to, could, and here comes Ronson. Dishes it off, and a finish from Mallory Brake. And it's Emma Ronson leading the break, to break. Emma Ronson is on a mission this evening. Again, another long stretch without a whistle. Six subs total <laughs> waiting to come in here. Ten lead changes, five ties. Olsen. And Dalsey 
And seven. A long stretch without a whistle. Ron at three. Scooped up by Jones. Creighton just two for its last ten. They started the second quarter, remember, six for six. At one point in this game, they made eight shots in a row. What a feed to Segrist. Cannot complete a possible and one opportunity, but you'll have two shots at the foul line when we come back. Teams in the tournament, and you saw those numbers. Three of 11 in the third quarter for the Blue Jays. So what's changed? The defensive intensity for Villanova is noticeably increased. Sometimes when they're struggling to find a bucket, they go Morgan Molly post up back down. How about Morgan Molly cutting to the basket for two? Jones had to slip her shoe back on. She was in the corner there. Good thing for her, Villanova likes to run half-court offense. Eight to shoot. Segrist through the double team, rims out. And the shot clock turned off to end the quarter. Creighton can tie or take the lead. Jensen with the ball. 12 points on four of seven. Five to shoot. All kinds of contact, and it's a foul against, I believe... Yes, Caitlin Oriole. You got fouls to give here. They won't. It's Molly. Fade away short. Rebound Segrist. And Villanova takes a two point lead into the final frame. I'm feeling a sense that we could see some Maddie Segrist heroics here, but we. Her team could certainly use to get some other players continue to be more involved on the offense. They have been a little bit. The rest of the team made just four shots in the first half. They made four in the third quarter at least. As Segrist continues her epic performance. 28 on 11 of 15. And that type of night for Morgan Molly. She's now one for eight from the floor. And that's the perfect look for Creighton. That's the look you want. This hasn't always found the bottom of the net tonight. They've made just one three. In the second half, they were four for eight from downtown in the first. Dowsing goes right around Molly. With the wiggle. There's the confidence that Denise Dillon was seeking out from players other than Maddie Segrist. Christina Dowsey, just a sophomore. Amazing. We're witnessing greatness. Yes, we are. All-time Big East leading scorer, men or women. And a much-needed bucket for Jensen. I haven't seen much from Ronson in the second half for Creighton. Remember, she picked up three fouls. They go through the first half as Oriole drills a three from the corner. Lucy Olsen again, back-to-back -back fouls. So she has two. Here is Ronson. Jensen stripped. Mogensen right at Olsen, counted in the foul. This is the type of play that Creighton needs to get that passion back, that fire back. Can't get the free throw, though. Loganson now has 12 points. Junior from Farmington, Minnesota. Dumped down, Dowsey rejected. That was Jensen from behind. Since six minutes to play. A spot in the Big East tournament title game on the line. Winner gets UConn. Ron Sick. 
threads it. Saunders. Coach Flannery told us he thinks Emma's value is crazy to his team, but he said out of all of his players, she puts the most pressure on herself, saying especially early on, her efficiency wasn't good. So I asked Emma, who would you look to to help settle yourself down? She said, I called my sister. She gets it. She knows what to say to me to just get me in a good headspace. Thank you, Megan. I think somebody's been in a good headspace all tournament long. That's Matty Segrist losing the UConn a season ago. Jensen, no, and the rebound, Runyon tapping it to Dalsey. And then she's fouled. And if it's against Ronsick, that's her fourth. And that is the fourth on Emma Ronsick. First foul on Creighton in this quarter. Playing, rolling the dice. Three minutes to play. Oh, yeah. No doubt about it. you got to keep your star in the game. Segrist from downtown. I said I could just feel it. I, she just senses the moment. You had to think that some big shots were coming from Maddie Seeger. She's up to 33 points. Jensen draws a foul. For three. Still learning situations a bit, but credit to Jensen for making something happen there. Jensen now up to 15. Likely try to shut down Segrist a little bit here over the final two and a half. At this point, you have to do all you can. You have to, at this point, force other players on Villanova to beat you. Olsen, Oriel, Dalsey, Mullen, and Segrist on the floor for Nova. Big mismatch right there on Seeger. She's calling for it. Big size mismatch. Instead of three. And the rebound, Saunders. Door is open for the Jays. And a timeout taken by Jim Flannery. Still has two left. Villanova with three. But I, I do see Lauren Jensen taking the ball out. I've been preaching all weekend. Don't forget about the inbounder. Britain just one for seven from downtown in the second half. Ooh. No call. Ronsick takes advantage. Championship game with UConn on the line. Double team on Segrist. Slips it in somehow. 35 for Segrist. Unbelievable. Double comes and she spins back the other way to sneak in for the layup. Jensen. That's a three. And it's proving to be very difficult, but you really have to do all you can to keep the ball out of Maddie Segrist's hands because once she catches it, she has been incredibly efficient at finishing no matter what defense has been thrown at her. I guess 14 for 20 from the floor is pretty good. Here is Segrist, back-to-back -back Big East Player of the Year. Off the mark, rebound Dalsey, and a jump ball. And the possession arrow points to the Jays, who has not led since 4.28 left in the third quarter. They can take the lead with a three. And this Creighton group that's out there right now is just so experienced. All returners, all part of that Elite Eight run. You have to think that that plays a factor here in a big moment. One more Villanova foul sends Creighton to the free throw line. Under a minute to play. Picked off, Olsen got in the cookie jar. And you can still play this cleanly defensively. Plenty of time, you don't have to get into a foul game just yet. 15 on the shot clock, 35 on the game clock. A spot in the Big East Tournament Final on the line. Kick out to Runyon. Segrist the put back. Draws a foul. With three seconds left on the timer because Runyon's three didn't hit iron. And Seagrass the chance to make it a two possession game. I was a bit perplexed by the initial look. Bella Runyon just four points per game at 27% three point shooter, but who's there to clean it up? 
Maddie Seabrist. 36 points, 10 boards, her 16th double-double. Four-point game. One timeout for Creighton. They will not use it here. In the Jensen. 25 seconds left. A three. No, rebound Dowsey. Picked up by Ronsick. Saunders on the floor. No whistle. And a jump ball. Possession arrow Villanova. They couldn't be looking at who the ball went off of because right. it was called a jump. So it was not part of the play. It was not initially ruled. We're looking at the bottom left here. They're saying a hand to the face. 10 in white, Dalsey to 13 in blue, Saunders. It was called an unobserved intentional foul. That means Creighton can choose any player to shoot two free throws, and they will receive the ball. A lot of twists and turns in this tournament. Jensen to the free throw line, and they will. And that is because Jensen is a near 80% free throw shoot. Eric Bruton and Rod Creech unsure I think, about the explanation, think, and now we're good to go. I think they're conferred should it have been Saunders who shoots the free throws, but they can choose any player in this situation. Because it was unobserved. And it was Dowsey's third foul of the game. Jensen wow. makes it a two-point game, Creighton basketball. Oh, my goodness. And this a timeout, is Jim Flannery. Let's see what Flannery goes with here. Is he going for a tie? Is he going for the win? I could see him going for a two and trying to get an N1. They've been really talented at strong attacks. Wow, here we go. Saunders, Jensen, Mogensen, Molly, and Ronsick on the floor for Creighton. Two-point game. Jensen. No, and the rebound, Segris, and she calls a timeout. Three seconds, so you have to steal the inbounds pass. Or force Villanova to call a timeout here to avoid the five-second violation. Ball comes in. Segris with it. And a foul with 1.6. And still two to give. And the clean inbounds is all you ask for here for Villanova. Nice to just throwing it to the corner so that Creighton can't steal it and chuck something up from midcourt. On the inbounder, gets it into Segris, and the foul from Saunders. Point seven left on the clock. One more, and Villanova is shooting. Again, I'm trying to throw this ball as far away from Creighton's basket as I can right now. In the Oreo, and that does it. Villanova hangs on and heads back to the tournament final for the second consecutive year.